Hey, what's going on everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and welcome to Deep Astrology, your weekly astrology forecast for the week of December the 10th through the 16th of 2019. And thank you so much for being a part of HighVibe.TV. If you want to watch this show exclusively full in its content form without just only hearing the audio part for the charts, make sure that you're a subscriber to HighVibe.TV. And of course, you can also get my daily weekly and special videos that are all on there, especially those daily horoscopes, those weekly horoscopes, and those sun sign videos, and the awesome new show that Craig and I are doing that was kind of a spin-off from Deep Love Tarot, which is called Full Disclosure, which is tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Pacific, live exclusively on HighVibe.tv. Make sure that you send your questions if you have questions that you want us to answer by emailing hvfulldisclosure at gmail.com. 1.30 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday. And of course, this show, if you've never been on it before, this is where we channel the astrology for you, and I'm going to go deep into what's going on, but then more importantly, we go deep into the charts, which are brought to you by Astro Gold, which are on iOS, Android, and of course, your MacBook or any of Mac devices. But if you're on PC, make sure that you check out Solar Fire. And this video is also sponsored by thewbros.com, the exclusive jewelry that you can get for rings. You can get awesome necklaces. You can get it in sterling silver like I'm wearing my Leo one right now. You can also get it in gold and rose gold. It's an awesome gift, especially for those that love astrology. Make sure that you get it now at the wbros.com and use the discount code LK10. And of course, 10% of the proceeds go to helping fight anxiety and depression. So make sure that you check that out. Awesome gift ideas. I've been getting people and I've been re, uh, restoring it on my Instagram. Boom. Well, are you all ready for the last full moon of this 2010s? You know, it's so funny. I remember New Year's Eve on 2010, like yesterday, believe it or not. And I remember looking out at this decade and just being like, wow, there's going to be so much that's going to happen and change in the universe. And if you look back, it really has. And you know, this is going to be a major moment because the last full moon of a decade you got to add this unique element to whenever you look at a full moon, it's a release. It's where we have peaked the moon cycle out, right? It's opposition to the sun. But take this also as like this major emotional release of the last decade. And because it's in Gemini with the sun here in Sagittarius, we have a lot to really try and understand and where our future is going in our life. But more importantly, it's about remembering all the facts and all the data and all the things in life that you learned. And I think that this is a very important moment, though, because as we are doing this whole entire, you know, full moon energy, right? We got Venus that is conjuncting Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn. Now, remember, we are literally, gosh, so January 12th and where are we at? We're going to be exactly a month away now from Saturn and Pluto to meet for the first time in Capricorn since 1517. So there is something to say here about that because Venus now... It's already kind of weird in Capricorn because Venus, of course, is where we feel good. It's our relationship energies. It's what we manifest from. Now, it's not the worst in Capricorn because, of course, it's not like it's at its horrible position, but Capricorn's very satirian. So Venus has to really think about the presentation, also make decisions. And Venus has to really make the best decisions for the long term. And it can bring a depressive energy, I'll be honest with you. And so you have to, you know, patience becomes extreme, especially with Saturn and Pluto right now. That's one thing that I really haven't mentioned much over the last couple of years that I've been pre uh, preparing everybody for Saturn and Pluto is, you want to talk about patience or time just feeling delayed all the time? Capricorn, Saturn, but you add Pluto, it makes it extreme. And then when you add Venus and Saturn, Venus and Saturn is always, you know, good for, you know, making sure that you put the proper steps in place. And, but it, it's like that long-term kind of building of a tower, right? Or building a skyscraper. It takes a long time and there's delays and there's a lot of things that you weren't predicting on that you have to like go maybe a couple steps back in order to move forward. And so when it comes to our relationship energies, especially that's important because with this Venus element and this full moon in, in Gemini, you know, there's a lot about this long-term environment that we need to figure out by looking in the environment, the energies that are around us, where are we stimulated, and where is the, the hope and the optimism. But, you know, Venus on Saturn can feel very, you know, low energy vibrationally wise. 
So one, don't start making a panic or anything just by that. But there is something to say though about when it comes to our relationships, our projects, it's about you know, which people in your life are gonna step up and work and do the energy that feels in alignment with where you wanna go in your life. And that's a big part of Venus Saturn. It's also an interesting aspect when we look internally in our souls because this is where we start to make big decisions on what we value the most in our life, what we want to, you know, bring more integrity to and that we wanna make, you know, more grown up decisions with. Now, for the fact that Venus is conjuncting Saturn and then going in between Saturn and Pluto, there's only about a degree and a half of separation there, almost two degrees, that it's being smushed. Okay, there's this smushing going on. And when you get smushing with Venus and Saturn and, and then with Pluto, so Pluto and Saturn are smacking Venus down. When Venus conjuncts Pluto this week after this full moon energy and everything, it's all intense. It's almost like you just have to really make major, major decisions and step forward with authority in your life. And that's especially considering that Mars and Scorpio is trining Neptune this week as well. And so with Mars and Scorpio trining Neptune, there's a lot about like having to just follow your gut because Mars and Scorpio is intuitive. It knows. It knows deep in its root and its sake and its, you know, this, 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 this energy you just know. And you have to trust the universe and go with that intuition with Neptune direct, of course, not retrograding anymore. We have to go into that position. But believe it or not, this week there is so much more going on. And a lot of what's going on, number one, is, well, I already mentioned a lot of things. I'm just not going to say it's just like number one. Like, but on this other part of things, we got Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, now in Capricorn, which, of course, you can check out those Jupiter and Capricorn videos. They are on sale on HighVibe.tv for your individual sun sign. And, or you can get a bundle and get all 12 of them for cheaper. But I do want to say that we're finally going to see Jupiter trying Uranus. Now, this has only happened once. So... Um, <laughs> especially in Capricorn, ever. This will be the one time in our lives we'll see Jupiter and Capricorn trying Uranus and Taurus, period. So this week it's happening, and it's happening into this weekend. So after Venus, you know, Saturn and Pluto, like you have to make some major choices, but there's a huge gift and payoff. And I'm going to say this in kind of a way of like, we're going to use kind of a Christmas carol kind of weird energy or story. The whole story of do you get coal or do you get a gift? There's something to say about us making choices and aligning ourselves with, the, with, with growing up and making tough choices in our life of what we must do. And we, we all are feeling the weirdness of Venus and Saturn and Pluto, okay? We're feeling that things just don't feel good the way we want to feel good. It brings up frustrations. It brings up a lot of barriers. And you either got to tough it out and just get through it, or it's because you got to make some really hard choice. Now, for those that take the load of responsibility on in their life, it's more just the frustration. But for those that are taking on a load that they don't want to be responsible for, whether that's a relationship especially, that you just, like, you're, you're too afraid to make the call or you're too afraid to, this is where you have to step up because with Jupiter trying Uranus, if you make that choice, middle of this week with this full moon, the last full moon of the decade, the last full moon of the year, in Gemini and show the universe like you're ready to make change. You're ready to change your environment. You're ready to change for a more positive outlook in your life. Jupiter trying Uranus is going to give you a gift that is going to revolutionize your life and make your life feel better. Especially we need to look at Taurus because of the fact that, well, Venus is the ruler of Taurus. And with Venus conjuncting Saturn and Pluto that happen to be in Capricorn and with Jupiter that's in Capricorn going to trine over to Uranus and Taurus, there is something to say about a better, more revolutionary, and something that you're going to look at your life and be like, I am so happy I did this. Even if it is a frustrating situation of just a lot of workload, or it's a frustrating situation of a very hard choice that you have to make when it comes to relationships and so forth. Because that's the only way that random occurrences and amazing pieces will come together, is when you just make authoritative decisions. And even though it seems very difficult and it seems very hard, especially when we're in a full moon in Gemini, it's almost like there's so many questions, but this Sag has to be a master. The Sun and Sag, and especially Mercury and Sagittarius, right? Mercury and Sagittarius is not like the best. It's at its detriment, of course. So it's in the opposite sign of where it would want to be. But, you know, it's because Jupiter is a huge landscape, right? It's like looking out at the galactic center in the universe and being like, whoa, 
And when we send a probe out there, or we look out there with a telescope, you know, it's like uh, you could just spend literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of life just in one person on a telescope and maybe even see like 0.01% of the universe, you know what I mean? So that's the whole thing with Mercury, trying to understand the whole world, like in the whole universe, it's impossible. Like we, and so Mercury's just like looking at everything, trying to stay positive and being like, I don't really know how it'll come together, but I'm hoping it will. You know, there's that, oh, I'm hoping. And it's been hard with Jupiter squaring Chiron for this last week because Chiron comes direct this week as well. Right around this full moon. I mean, it's just like so funny to me that with Chiron coming direct here in Aries, you know, we've learned a lot, especially this last half of the year of the Chiron retrograde of like, you know, things really are not going to look the way we think they're going to look. They don't turn out. If we try to force things too much or we try to put our ego's attachment to how we think things should look, there just seems to be no cigar there. You know what I mean? So it's like, Ah, and especially with Jupiter squaring it, it deflates us. Chiron square Jupiter is a deflating energy. It like takes all the wind out of your sails. It just takes that beach ball pool that all the people are playing with at the pool party and pops it. And it's like, what? It's like, this is something that, you know, we all are learning right now. But the good news with Chiron coming direct is this is going to be where you've learned that and you're, it's teaching us to really just shed our egos and hold on to the space of hey i walk forward and i see what happens i walk forward and i see what happens and even if it doesn't look the way i want to somehow there's there's something about really seeing that there's a healing element in every lesson and something that you want to see or identify or look a certain way so bad that when it doesn't happen that way there's a major healing lesson there. And with Jupiter finishing that square and then getting this nice trine to Uranus, it's like we get paid for that. So some things that have not turned out the way that you thought that it was going to look, especially with Saturn, Venus, and Pluto at the beginning of this week, it's almost like we're coming into like a deflating energy. We don't see things the way that we want to. And then out of nowhere, on the backside of this full moon, when we come into Friday the 13th, ironically enough, and especially into the 14th and 15th of this weekend, oh my gosh, just like Jupiter and Uranus, we can make it happen, we can figure it out. This is connecting. Chiron's direct, you know, there's this, there's this understanding and healing and the universe retrieving us the gifts or the coal. And I think the coal only comes when you really just give up. I think that even though Chiron and Aries doesn't get what it wants the way that it looks, it doesn't mean give up. It just means that accept, hold the way that it is, and see if somehow it's going to still take you on the road. If you really were wanting it, it Chiron and Aries is a test to still define the road you want, even when it doesn't look the way you want to. Like, I do a lot of driving, a lot. And you know, it's like, in LA, we have traffic all the time. So it's like, oh, usually at this time there's no traffic. And then sometimes, you know, you go and it's like, fuck, why is there traffic? Or sometimes you go and you're expecting traffic and there's no traffic. It's kind of one of those weird paradigm shifts in life. Like, wait, what? Like, I've been just, every time it's supposed to not be, it's always been and I don't want it that way. Or it's now the flip that shows up this weekend at the end, like of this week. It's like, what? Like, man, it was not going this way. And how did it just switch on me in this beautiful way and create abundance and but we have to own our values because one thing that is going on is the only planet retrograde is Uranus and Taurus and so when it comes to self-worth you know Uranus is now coming to the last degrees it's gonna by the end of this week come to two degrees here and uh, and and this one's weird because this is where Uranus is gonna station and stop at two degrees and then come direct at the beginning of January so you know this is the this is like, we are almost all planets direct. So like a lot of karma and a lot of the shit you have to realize in life, you know, it's played its tune. The only thing left here is you're honest. And it's like, we have to keep advancing forward and reinventing life. And still when we, our self-worth is tested and shocked, not let it be some kind of shock collar to stop us from barking. I'm using an analogy like for a dog, but like, you know, it's almost like we have a shock collar every time there's something affecting your self-worth or your value in yourself and making you feel, you know, like, oh, am I not good enough? Or, you know, and especially with all these deflating energies lately. And I'll be honest, the energy is getting darker and darker since we're not able to see all these planets because of the fact that everything is so close to the sun. 
You know, the only thing that we're going to be able to really see is Venus just because of the fact that Venus is just running fast and getting away from the sun. And she is traveling the fastest away from the sun. And, and, and I want to bring that up about this whole idea of like occult. Occult means hidden. And what's really, really interesting about these times we're heading into is like all these planets, and especially we can't see Uranus even though it's in Taurus. And we can't see Chiron either, you know. So, because it sits in between Saturn and Uranus, right at that barrier line where we have to use a telescope to see Uranus. There's something to say about it. with all these planets all coming into the zone of where the sun is, we can't see the planets. <laughs> so, because they're in the daytime is when you can see them. What we see at night is the opposite. We see where the North Node is, even though it's invisible, you can see the star Sirius every night. You see it rising on the horizon. You see Sirius rise and come to its amazing position late at night. And, and so this is where the ancients pointed everything, and it's about this emotional truth, this emotional security, not in the sense of attachment, but true authentic human self. And even though care and compassion and family are number one right now to focus on, the, the loop and the cycle of Saturn, and, and, it, and it's getting too much energy with Pluto. It's got Venus on it. It's got you know, Jupiter and Capricorn, it's got the south node there, there's so much that's just feeding Saturn that, you know, there is this part that the south node is just heavy and the north node is nothing, but it does have this powerful, you know, aspect of the star Sirius. And I, I, I want to say that, you know, this is a time for you to focus on how to really light up your life to be in, in, in alignment with the true focus of where you're going with your true spiritual self. That's the comfort. The comfort is in your true spiritual self and not giving in to, like, oh, I'm going to quit and just kind of go backwards, especially with Uranus and Taurus right now. And especially, it's hard, though, because these are in di all weird different situations. They're about your internal, long-term, you know, spiritual mission in life. And some people don't believe they got one, but they, we were all given one. And you know what that calling is, and you know which... You know, and for some people, because Saturn and Pluto are so close, we've never seen them this close since the 1980s, especially the last time would have been in 1983. Um, this is when relationships in, in Libra, Saturn and Pluto were. So the, the relationship thing is the most intense. I mean, literally, like every reading I'm doing right now is just straight up like, it's your relationship, it's your relationship. And it's like all written all over the wall. And... You know, for those that are single out there, then it's like the, oh, there's nobody, is there? You know what I mean? So, some people might be like, oh, well, well if you're telling me that going single is like, is there anyone out there? And it's just a hellhole. It's like, no, it's not that. It's about, you know, there's, there's some people that are meant to be together. Some people are meant not to be together. But there is something to say that when it comes to this relationship energy, being a full moon this week, being Venus conjunct Saturn and Pluto, this is the first time we're seeing something conjunct Saturn and Pluto this close in over 37 years. So, I mean, come on. There's something to say about that. And there is something to say about with Venus this week, you know, we have to make these decisions on, on, on this now. Because this full moon energy, once it ends, now the moon comes waning, so it loses its, like, power. And Mars right now in Scorpio is making great trines of Neptune. Like, you know, there is no doubt even though mentally with a full moon in Gemini, you're going to be questioning things and, you know, it's slightly squaring Neptune. So there is kind of like a, a fog about everything. But you know what? You know in your intuition, you know in your gut, you know in your deeper wisdom of what to do here. And you don't want to wait because remember that the eclipses start in two weeks. And, and this solar eclipse is going to be with Jupiter right on top in its fall position with the south node. So, you know, this is going to be like, big lessons about the choices you make in your life. With Saturn and Pluto conjuncting, with the Sun and Mercury and Capricorn, and a lunar eclipse and Cancer coming that follows that on January 10th. So we have Christmas and then January 10th. I mean, it's like you don't want to be making those choices in that zone. Although, you know what? I'll be honest with you. Solar eclipses are what usually bring breakups. So, you know, and it's usually this two-week cycle before the eclipse that you just start to see it get really intense. So... And, and, and it's like, you almost start to see, it's almost kind of like a, 
the, the pre-kickoff, the kickoff, you know, to the game. Like, you, you, you know, you start to see the kickoff energy. You feel it. You start to see the, 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 the I'm using a football analogy now, but like you kind of see the people on the field now about what's going to happen this week. And patience is hard, I know. But, but, but patience is kind of the energy that it feels like, but it also, patience is about something because you're ready to do something. If you're patient about something but you have no choice to make, well, then you're not patient. That means that you're actually sitting in limbo. So this is a choice between limbo and it's a choice between whether you're going to make authoritative decisions in your life this week. And especially because with Mercury here in Sag, you know, there is something to say about it, trying to figure things out. But at least with Chiron Direct, at least with Jupiter trying Uranus this week, like there are so many amazing people to connect to this week. Social aspects are awesome with Jupiter trying Uranus. Finding the people in the tribe is everything. That's where all the luck is right now. So when you look at your partnerships, if you're in one in your relationships, does it connect with the kind of tribe that you want to be in? Does it connect with the kind of people that you want to be around? Does it connect with the kind of person you are and the kind of energies that you like to be like? That's a big question. Like if you're with somebody and the tribes are way different and the beliefs are all different because at the end of the day, you know what this is? This is a rite of passage. That's what Saturn and Pluto is. Wow, Jupiter. It's the rite of passage to your destiny. And I've said it for a long time and you, you know what? I'll have to go back and find the videos, but you know what the key card is? What relationships you're in. Because the last Saturn and Pluto was in Libra. And you just spent the last 30 plus years we all went up and down and everything through crazy relationship situations because of the fact that we had to learn who we are through relationships and which ones do not reflect who we are and which ones do. But there is something to say about with everything coming into Capricorn, and we're going to be talking about this when we get, actually get to that space, but we're not there yet. But it's going to be about how you survive in the world where power and, you know, how you get... <laughs> How do you get on the right shooting ladder in life? And you're going to want partnerships that aren't holding you back from that, but are thriving you forward into those positions. And there's something to say about it that you cannot escape right now. The only escape truly is like the ones that we don't like to talk about that are unfortunate in the world. And I'm not going to condone those. Because even then, with Saturn and Pluto, if you thought that escaping that way would be a good deal because you don't want to deal with life, well, guess what? Whatever karma is meeting you on that side of the events of life or wherever you go next is not going to be fun at all. So this is a time where it's like, no matter what you do, life is going to be right there. And you're going to have to deal with life. And so there is no kind of like a, a better escape except for making choices that you know are the best for you in the long run and setting yourself up like a chessboard and ready for the move from the universe. And you, you, you got to see that this last full moon is that's going to bring up all the, the most stra strategic move of your life that you need to figure out. And how to make those changes in your reality based off the little ones. It's little changes, and then with this, of course, with the fact that we got Jupiter trying Uranus, like, yeah, they're big ones and big choices that are revolutionary to creating a better life and seeing what tools and seeing what people really value and that you value and that are stimulating to you. Because Venus does come off of Saturn and Pluto this, by the end of this week. And even though it's still in Capricorn, we've got to make really smart choices. And it's going to end, you know, at a time where the sun as well is going to come to the last decan of, uh, of Sagittarius. And, you know, we're getting headed towards this galactic center. And, and we, we are getting ready for... Pfft, getting ready for Capricorn soon. And we're getting ready for eclipses. And we're getting ready for the biggest fate trade moment of our lives. So, this week, don't... Don't go against what your gut's telling you to do. The writing's on the wall. Neptune trying Mars. I know it's a weird transit. I know it's a, it's a, it's a nice trine, though, but it's like, they, these are the two intuitives. Mars and Scorpio is an intuitive Mars of action. Neptune and Pisces is like, you know, it's going to be a little bit of an ego wipeout, you know, because it's going to be like, shit. My ego wanted it to look this way, and this is very much with the whole Chiron stationary retrograde to stationary direct. Like, Fuck, I wanted it to look this way. I wanted it to be easier. But I know my gut's telling me and my guides and God's telling me to do this. But fuck, my own ego way of doing it is not the way that I would want it to look like. 
why don't you take the ultimate faith test of your life? Because this is about faith in Sag. And with the full moon in Gemini, it tries to figure it all out and strategize and Venus and Saturn and Pluto. Of course, there's a lot of that stuff. That's fine. But the intuition is saying to take a leap towards what your gut is saying. Take a, take a leap and know that there are frustrations, there are barriers and there are pains that we all have to go through in life that don't feel the best. But there's something about ripping this band-aid off. There is something about just really, you know what? Sometimes you got to slap some dirt on it and move on in your life. And even though it's a shitty situation, it's much shittier to not do anything about it and wait for everything to crumble on top of you. Let's take a look at the charts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Moving on the couch. What's up, everyone? Um, I'm just going to take a quick little drink of this. <clears throat> All right. We got a lot going on this week, but we're going to make this pretty simple. And I just want to say... We are having an awesome full moon party here on Thursday. If you go to my Facebook or if you go to the High Vibe Facebook group, there is the link on, on there to RSVP. We only have 100 spots. I haven't checked, but from what I know, I think we're there, but we're gonna hit up every single person, all these hundreds of people, and make sure these people are going. So if you wanna go, put yourself on the list so you can see. We are gonna be live streaming it, um, but it's definitely not the same experience. So it's going to be an awesome event, though. The biggest event we've ever thrown here at High Vibe. So um, I'm pretty stoked. And everybody at High Vibe has just done an amazing job. And you guys will see something that you've never seen before. And especially I feel that at High Vibe, the team here is literally leading the way of showing that there's a spiritual community that is thriving and living and connecting and creating something beautiful. And that's really what Highwives is about. And for those that, of course, subscribe, you get this full reading and you get all the other awesome content. And there's so many other things that we have to show you that are beyond words. And I just want to say thank you even for those that are on YouTube that always continue and watch all the other shows that I, that I do. And of course, at this point, it's going to go to audio when we look at these charts. But I just want to say I still appreciate you and there's going to be always content coming out to you all the time. Anyway, let's take a look at the 10th of today, which is Tuesday, which is kind of a funny day for me because, of course, I went to boot camp December 10th, 2002. So I have a really weird trigger about this day always. But um, here's that full moon getting ready as it's in Gemini here. And make sure that if you are uh, watching this video and you want to watch it in its full entirety, that uh, it's not just audio. Make sure that you go to highvibe.tv and become a subscriber and you can always have deep astrology and you can watch it live on the app and on our website or Apple TV or Roku or any of those um, aspects that we got, Android. We also have notifications on there too to notify you when we're live. But, you know, this full moon in Gemini is beginning here to start Tuesday. But, you know, it's this Chiron to me that stopped that we got to pay attention to because when you see this Venus, Saturn, Pluto, so there's Venus at 18, there's Saturn at 19, and there's Pluto at 21. And, you know, this is the last week before Pluto is starting to get ready to come out of shadow. Saturn is getting ready to come out of shadow. But here's Venus that's about to have to go through the biggest wall of all time, Saturn and Pluto, the most intense. And so there's a lot to say about Venus and Saturn because Venus is the brightest star. And Saturn is the dullest. And so that's where I'm giving you that whole analysis about like kind of feeling a little bit dull, but bright at the same time, which can also kind of be frustrating because there's beautiful things at hand right now. But then there's also the reality check that's like very intense and very difficult to deal with and very weird and very, um, it's, it's difficult. But I will have to say, if you look at how Chiron here has, at one degree, it's finishing here, at the, uh, here on Tuesday at one degree, about to go to two degrees here, Wednesday into Thursday. There is something to say that this Chiron Jupiter square has been difficult, okay? Because not only has it been affecting our outlook on things, but Jupiter is at its weakest position here. And so, Chiron, you know, Jupiter's not that 
beneficial, especially when it deals with like wanting it to just be like easy going. No, Jupiter and Capricorn's about you have to do the work. You got to show up. You got to participate. It's kind of like the lotto. You got to play to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so if you're not playing, if you're not showing up, or if you're not making executive decisions in your life, or you're not just showing up and doing the work and just doing it, like there is zero benefit. You will see nothing happen. It's like really intense. And with Chiron there, it kind of leaves this like, well, I want it to look another way. I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to make this choice. I don't want it's like when you start wallowing in that, I'll be honest, this is like between melancholy and depression. It's like a different space. It's like kind of there, and, but, it, but fully there, but not. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a weird bug on the back of your head. Like, yeah, like that's just, uh. and so this is, this is a time that, you know, it's something to say about not messing around with it. Especially now that Uranus has retrograded back to 3-3. Three, three. Oh, that's kind of interesting, right? So we got the semi-square back to Neptune. And so this is where, you know, soul-wise, we have to ascend in radical new ways that are better for our life, but it's going to be sensitive. And that's how you know it's the right thing to do. The sensitive, the sensitive stuff, believe it or not, rises you to the better places. So... This has been going on for since last year, okay? Like, and this is also where media that rules Neptune has been in a weird place where it's a misunderstanding or there's these weird kind of aspects of the information and what really is quality information and what is quality connection and what is cloaked and what is not that we're all weighing out right now. And that, that 45 is 47, but it's closing the gap more. And 45 is a semi-square. Um, and Mars. So if we go to Mars at 14, you know, Mars is coming to some pretty strong spots where it, li it likes this meat and potatoes of Scorpio right here. But it is the making that great awesome aspect and trine over to Neptune at 1558 going 16. So we're going to see Mars this week. And that's what I'm saying is even though this is where you want to focus on right here in the astrology right now is this Venus Saturn and you know, it's kind of, it's kind of unfortunate, like I said, because it's not something that you really get to see just for the fact because, you know, when you understand a chart, like, you know, it's like once the, once the sun sets, you know, it's like this is where you would see these energies and they're very dull already. They need to be in pure darkness, especially Saturn. You don't really get to see Saturn um, at all, like, unless it's like kind of like away from the sun completely. And Pluto's hidden, and Venus is trying to get away enough from the sun so where she can be seen more. So it's hard to see these energies, and even Jupiter, right? Because it's so close to the sun. And it, it's, it's only seen when it sets at night. So, I mean, and, and you can't. It's too close. So, you know, Venus has to do this hop and a jump over. And it's not easy. And it's dull. It's bright, bright meaning dull, and she can't even be full bright, and Saturn really kind of doesn't mind being dull right now because it, it would rather take up the backup power of the generator of Pluto that's here to transform and transmute things. And, and, and this is a, is a major thing to pay attention to. Um, you know, just when I look around at this, especially this Mercury this week, and I didn't mention this in the channeling, but Mercury is going to quincunx over to Uranus. So here we are, a full moon in Gemini, and Mercury is in its detriment. So we got to remember that too, that we always got to pay, uh, pay attention to the dispositor of this, you know, in a, in, in a weird way, because m the moon is in Gemini, we need to look at Mercury and Mercury is in detriment. And then Mercury is making a weird aspect to Uranus, which is the higher octave of Mercury. So when it comes to this kind of um, trying to understand what is the best road or who is the right people and all that, there's a lot of options. There's a lot that you... It's almost like, you know, it's like a math problem you can't solve. But the truth is, is that Mars trying, Neptune is saying, yes, you do. You just know what the intuition is. You need to follow that instead of like calculating so much. This is where a full moon will, you know, it's not what you think it is. If you, full, if you, if you keep putting your attention on the moon, especially in Gemini and Mercury's in, in its detriment, like you're just going to just... If you're trying to figure things out in such a logical, like kind of crazy way right now, you're going to lose yourself. You have to go with wisdom. You got to go with 
taking, uh, you know, Sag is a risk too. It's like a belief and you just got to believe. This is blind faith. And with Mars and Scorpio, try Neptune. It's like a quest of, I know in my gut I'm supposed to do this. I'm called by God to, to put everything in to go in this direction and just go. And that's also with Venus and Saturn. Saturn's going to pay Venus to do things. Saturn ain't going to pay Venus to just not show up by making choices. Just about by making choices about the people you want to be around, the things that make you feel better, even though it just is like, gosh, it feels like work. But there's something to say about just showing up and just doing it and just making it happen and going with what your gut says to do and doing it and not falling victim to so much of this. So Tuesday, this is not a lot of easy energy right now. It's not. As we come to Wednesday, there's some change. Just for the sheer fact that we were at the actual full moon Wednesday at 9, 12 p.m. Pacific, technically it'll be on Thursday at about midnight on the East Coast. But I want to show you the exact full moon at 19 degrees and 51 minutes because that thing is squaring Neptune, all right? And so, you know, running our mind is a lot right now and trying to figure out so many things about the environment and our, and our questions and what are the long-term answers and what does the, the teacher say? What does the guru say? You know, there's a little bit of this, huh? And especially because Neptune is in semi-square to Uranus, these are very complicated problems. And with Mercury, of course, which is coming off the quincunx, but, you know, Mercury is getting ready for squares to Neptune soon. And with Chiron still retrograde here, there is something to say in this full moon with Venus exactly smushed between Saturn and Pluto that, you know, we almost feel like we're stuck when we're not. We just have to make choices and make change. Or we have to just own and embody what it is that we want, that we, want, that we value, and, you know, take some risks with relationships. Take some risks with some things that we want to create in life and see what happens. Because if you don't, there's no payout. That's the whole thing of this whole Jupiter and Capricorn. We've never seen this in our lives. I want to just put that out again because of the sheer fact that we've never seen Saturn and Pluto this close in Capricorn in any of our lives in 500 years. And now you're mixing Venus in between and plus with Jupiter here, we've never seen this since the 1282s. Okay. That's a long time ago. And that was with the North node, by the way not the south node. So we've never actually technically seen this in over a millennium. But there's something to say that the nodes were in Cancer and Capricorn, so we can kind of at least say they were there. But this is a smushed energy because this full moon cycle is, is what is the peak of this last two weeks that started the new moon cycle that was with Venus and Jupiter energies that had just conjuncted, and then it was Jupiter at the end of Sag in these big dreams. So we're still running off of a new moon in Sagittarius, but it's now reached to a full moon in Gemini. And there's something to say about that we have these amazing adventures, these amazing doorways that can open, but you're, you're smushed between making some of the most radical like commitments of your life and the most intense decisions of your life. And it deals with Venus, people, money, set values, and what you want. And if you're on the track or not, are the, are these your destiny tracked? And with this full moon exactly quincunx all of this. See that? So I'll actually erase this really quick. Um, actually, I think I can go. Oh, I can go back. Here we go. So you can see these, this green line. See it right here? So here's here's this 150. Okay, like 19 degrees. So see it to all three. You can see all these three lines right there. And look at that all there in 19, 20, 21. So this energy is extremely involved with the full moon in a weird angle. And that's what this full moon is about. The questions about is about the long-term choices about relationships and the commitments and the changes and the projects and, and what risks you're taking and what will be the payout and what will not be the payout or what will be detrimental to your life or what will be amazing to your life. You have to look at this. And this, I think, is more apparent for people who, you know, I think all of us are dealing with certain relationships, whether they're romantic or whether they're family or whether they're business or whether they're not. But we are all on the cooker for on this one, on this full moon. And it's not easy. And, and it's going to feel pressure. And you got Mars and Scorpio, which can get really pissed, especially with the, the trine now to Neptune at 15, because 
anything that starts going on in this energy, especially when you're dealing with Neptune, right? Like if it doesn't go the way that spirit wants it to go or something, it's almost like, uh-oh. And that's not something for you to, you have to learn to like let go and to just move into the beauty of Neptune, the compassion of Neptune, of surrender. Like Mars actually wins the war by surrendering to this kind of higher calling. It doesn't mean like surrender the war or surrender your battle or your, your will for life. Especially that, because that's one confusing part. Even though it's a trine, you have to remember that Neptune, every time you're dealing with it, is always going to bring out some sort of wipe out about your ego when it's dealing with Mars, especially. Or the Sun. You're going to be dealing with some sort of ego wipe out. Okay? And so, you know, or will wipe out. Like, oh, I'm just, I don't, this wave's too big. I can't catch it. I'm too tired. I'm not going to catch this wave. It's like, yeah, but that gets you in to the shore. Or do you want to swim? It's like, oh, good point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's what's so beautiful about it. And this full moon as well is making its 45 degree angle to Uranus. So we've got Neptune and the moon making semi squares to Uranus, the only planet retrograde. So there's a lot of eyes on Uranus, okay? Because everybody's kind of looking at it, kind of like, you know, like big old eyes, like, like, hmm? Hmm? Actually, we'll get rid of that. And, like, hmm? and everybody's looking, you know, ah. everybody's looking at Uranus, the only red one, retrograde. Um, but what's interesting, of course, yeah, Chiron, but remember Chiron, they already look at hit Chiron all the time as like a weirdo and you're not, he's not, that's a, not a planet. That's Chiron. Okay, that's not a planet, but that's coming direct. At least when they're looking at it, they're like, well, he's about to come direct, but Ah, you're honest. You're not the one joining the party. So the one that figures out all the crazy random things and how they get put together and it's in its fall sign of Taurus. Where he, uh, this is a big realization, everyone. Because on the full moon, here's Jupiter. Two degrees. Finally. Okay, it's off Chiron. And it's making a trine to Uranus at three, which is about to go two. So there is some beautiful aspect here of like, we can actually see a way to get to the way that we want to go in life and connect all the dots, but we got to make some very big choices or we just got to like put in the work and it will pay out. But relationship wise, you know, it's like who's on the, the track of life that you want to be on in your life. If that's not the track, that's not the track and you'll know, especially with Jupiter, the, the guru and the wisdom trying your honest now, who, wh where, where do you have that tribe? Of course there's going to be quarrels and bumps and stuff, but, but, but where is it just like, extreme because it's Pluto and Saturn where it's like fuck I you know whether that's an ex or whether that's a relationship that's just so toxic and you feel stuck I'm talking to those people especially that this is where you feel squeezed to the max and a full moon in Gemini is, try, is like wanting to communicate emotionally it's wanting to express its opinions and talk, talk about people's opinions and and, 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 you know, people are going to be huffing and puffing and people are going to be saying their shit. Today I was running around saying, at this, bah, just from this, I have a lot going on, a lot of stress. But it's like, you know, we got to let things out with moon in, a full moon in Gemini. And some people will let it out crazy. And so be prepared because it's squished. Nobody's feeling good. Unless you make some sort of big choices or you just keep, you just show up and you understand that this is not a time of like where it's going to feel beautiful anymore. And I was trying to prepare people that, sorry, once we moved into this zone, it's not easy. So if you think that this zone is easy, like we're not even in the red zone. We're, we're, we're in the red zone, but like we're about to go to like fourth and goal and it's like 40 yards out for some people. Like what? If you don't understand football, like, maybe you should research that one. But it's like, at least you could still, you have a last moment here to kind of go. Because I would say after this, there's not a lot, of, there's, like no, there's like no more moments left, really, except this Jupiter trying Uranus, which is going to pay people coal and stuff now by the choices they make, because this full moon is exactly in quincunx to these aspects. And when we do move to Friday and Thursday, well, sorry, Thursday, um, it's interesting because Venus is still squished there between Saturn and Pluto. And then here's the moon at 28 
going to start to oppose Jupiter while it comes into Cancer that day on Thursday. And what's interesting is here's Chiron ready to come direct. Okay, so it actually comes direct on the 12th. I think it's around 7 p.m., but it does come direct, if I remember right. Um, yep. And there it is, 7, 12 p.m. Pacific. By already 8, 12, it's already direct. So it is going direct on Thursday, and that's a big deal because with this squish, and this is a major squish on Venus, you've got to make some of the most... This is where trophies are given out to those that have been putting a lot of work in and been on the right path, and this is where with Jupiter trading Uranus at 2, and look at this. Here's Uranus at 300. Zero, zero. Look at that. Bam. Going two. Okay. So we're getting that nice trine. This is where the payoff starts to come for those that have been putting the work in and the payout for those that make choices that might be difficult and hard, but it actually opens up a radical new doorway and connects you with all the things that you need connected with. So if you're having really hard troubles right now with making a choice, like in your life, okay? Like, let's say you have like a hard choice about a relationship. Let's say you have a hard choice just about anything right now. And you just are like, I don't see any way that I can move forward. Well, make the choice, take the risk. Mars is training Neptune. If we actually look at this, Neptune's at uh, 1559. And Mars is exact at 1533. So we're, we're at the trine exact right after the full moon while the moon's finishing in, in there and the moon is opposing Jupiter. So it's almost like it gives us a little bit of like over optimism, but I think we kind of need that for a minute to just be able to pull something off. And we get a payoff by doing that, and Chiron comes direct late that night, Thursday. And we could be healed quick. But, but in the middle of this squishing, we want to make those, cho those choices and those changes because Venus is one degree away from Pluto, and that's where the transformation is received, and you're receiving a gift, or you're receiving something beautiful relationship-wise, or, or it's the ending of something and the new beginning of something, too. But there is something to say about a lot of gifts to be received here, but it's about the choices that we make during this time. Also, it's a very intense time as well because the sun is at 20 degrees. Now, that means it's in the last decade, all right, of, of Sag. And, and, and there's kind of like a, you know, bleep, bleep, last call. Because we're about, you know, we're, we're, we're at the last, you know, these last 20s before we get to Capricorn and the major Capricorn situation. And with Mercury, you know, there's something to say, uh, you know, even though it's in its detriment and it's not doing anything, it's not really aspected by much. Kind of like a little bit off in its own little world there. And that moon in Cancer is going to bring up some heavy emotional stuff during that time or positive emotional stuff with that moon in Rahu about what you really want to feel in your life. Or you're going to deny that and Capricorn's either a reward or it's you holding off and keeping yourself in a, in a jail. You know, like if you ever see those old 1800 pictures and the person's like, what the hat? Like that's where you restrict yourself if you're just going to want to stay with that who you know who or whatever situation that you know you should change. Like, or it's the ultimate gift of the trophy. You know what I mean? And we'll just use the Olympian flame and the rings, you know, and the person on the podium holding it. Ha ha. Yes. So what, what, which one do you want? Do you want jail or do you want trophy this week? Work comes with trophies. Avoiding work and not doing the things that are of your integrity and more importantly, that you know are the best for you long-term, feel like jail. And we are intuitively guided with that Neptune and Mars. Man, like you know. No more, like, there shouldn't be any questions of the mind, but questions of why are you not following what your soul is saying. Friday the 13th. Ironic, another weird part about this week. There's a lot of synchronicities about this week. Full moon, last full moon of the decade. Last Friday the 13th of the decade. And here's that moon in Cancer. And guess what it's doing? It's going to oppose this whole shit show party <laughs> in Capricorn, okay? 
So, but the good news is we are having that Jupiter and Uranus trine and it's starting to get more exact and there's Chiron direct. So all that's left is Uranus and it's like, let's step up to a higher realm now and emotionally, it might not be easy to face some of these tough choices, but with Rahu and the moon, the North Node and the moon, there is something to say about us. It's, it's not easy. Rahu and the moon is not an easy thing. It brings up disruption. It, it causes the moon to kind of go through uncomfortable situations to get what it wants. It's like not comfortable. And even though cancer is all about getting comfortable, that's why I keep saying uncomfortable decisions are what will bring you to comfort when you see that the comfort's on the other side of the uncomfortable decisions. Instead of staying in an uncomfortable place and thinking that you're more comfortable in an uncomfortable place. And Mars now 1613, done with the exact trine, and Neptune's now at 16. So now we're never going to see in our lives again at Neptune at 15 degrees on this day, Friday the 13th, ironically enough. That means we are exactly halfway through the sign of Pisces with Neptune. And Neptune's the home dignified ruler of Pisces. So we are now halfway through the Neptune transit. Neptune comes out of Pisces in 2026. Okay? But Neptune now is on the second half. And Mars just got a big try into it, and now Mars at 16. You know, it's like, okay, I, fa I, I followed the intuition or whatever, and there's something to say with Mars and the moon trying. There's something to say with Jupiter trying Uranus. Like, this is where benefits come, or this is where you feel like kind of locked away, and you can get frustrated. And there's, there's a grand trine with the moon right here, okay? There's gonna be a beautiful grand trine with the moon, Mars, and Neptune. And with Venus done with Pluto, you know, it's almost gone through its kind of I don't know why I was about to say excavation, but it's, it's gone through its major transformation. It's given you all the truth. It's given you the hard truth, nothing but the truth. So help you in your decision. And I think that this is where some people might start to make the decision now, but you'll notice much more of a beneficial time with this grand trine about if you followed your intuition and you followed your gut and you did it, you'll start to see some really good comforts and you're going to start to see some radical things come together and some exciting things come together. And I'd be prepared for extreme big unpredictability this week. Jupiter and Uranus are trining. Jupiter is amplifying Uranus while it's retrograde about to come direct, like with as much energy as it can do. And in Capricorn about making choices that are better. And this is an earth physical reality shifts that are, whoa, and dealing with people. Venus on Pluto, people. Venus and Pluto is very scorpionic like anyways because it adds kind of that like obsessive kind of quality. Venus doesn't do well there, but it also adds kind of the quality of when you know you need to put the boundaries and say no and just put an end to something. You know, but some people could double down the wrong way and be like, I'm just going to stay in the shitty situation. I'm, fucking, I'm just going to stay here. And blah, 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 blah. It's like, whoa. And if we move to Saturday... That Jupiter Uranus thing is continuing and the moon's going to finish in Cancer and it's going to oppose Venus. And so there's something to say about this weekend. If you're getting benefits or not, you'll know because that moon's going to feel if it did, that moon is going to know if it did. And at the same token, Jupiter and Uranus are in trine. And they're exactly trining this weekend, the most potent of the trine. So there's a lot of great things that can come about with this week's, especially this weekend's astrology based on the choices we make during this full moon. And more importantly, or those that just have been doing the work, they've already made all the work choices and like you see the benefits and you make some minor adjustments and changes that need to be made. Um, you see major, major benefits start to come. But this weekend, the moon is going to go void off course and kind of just kind of trail off into cancer and kind of an emotional world. And it's either going to be a positive emotional world or it's going to feel like a very depressed fuck. I'm in jail kind of energy energetically. And it could feel very sludgy because of course Mars is trying to move forward really strong, but it's in a semi semi quadrant over to Chiron. So it's like, gosh, it won't look the way that you expect but just say fuck it and fuck identification for a second and go with gut and go with drive and go with deep knowing and go with edge and just go with that. Don't go with 
how you think it should look in your life and all that. Go with your gut and go with that edge and that passion that you know that's there. And this is sludgy, this moon having to oppose all this. And if you think that this moon's going to be intense this weekend, of benefits or not benefits, wait till the lunar eclipse a month from now. With Saturn and Pluto conjunct. So as we move to Sunday, there's the exact trine from Jupiter to Uranus finishing. The moon is in Leo, giving some fire to the sun and to Mercury. This is the end of the fire, folks. Monday, Sunday into Monday. All right? Because when the moon comes around for the solar eclipse, we're going to have a dark moon in Sag. There will not be a sun in Sag. So this is the last fire we're going to see for a while. There's, I mean, you know, like, and you can't really give Mercury a lot of power here in Sag. It would rather be in an air sign. And it's going to be squaring Neptune and getting drowned. So, there's something to say about, like, the options are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, like, and they're in quantum, quantum levels. You know, I was watching, again, a lot of, t um, of Terrence McKenna and, and Time Wave Zero using the I Ching. And just for an example, like, what he did is he had a graph always, and he would take parts of time. So he took the last 4,500 years, and then let's say, here's 2012. So, you know, and then there was, I think it was 384 days before December 21st, 2012. Okay? And then there was six days, and then there was like 23 hours, okay? So it was like all the compression of 4,500 4, years compressed into it right here. Then it compressed the, the, the 384 days. So basically like the last parts of 2011 into December, like six days before December 21st, so that would have been December like 16th, you know, com got compressed all into there. Then it got compressed all in there. And then the last six days was the major compression of all that to there. And then the compression of all those days and everything in the last 23 hours compressed until it hit a zero point which he always showed these major events that would happen in these compression points. But what's interesting is he did unfortunately die before 2012. I think he actually died in the late 90s, like right there, right before we even got into the 2000s. So his work really has not gone on. And behind the scenes, I've been playing around with doing this graph from what do we do now after December 21st of 2012? Well, what I've been trying to tell people of when you look at this from an astrological point of view, and I've been looking at it from incorporating everything from the year of the rat coming up, the end of the pig cycle in Chinese. Um, I even been messing with the Cards of Truth software and actually running like the full moon and running the, the equinoxes and running all this stuff and looking at the dignified positions of planets and using all these different divination tools and, 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 and portals are everything. And these are portals. And what's interesting is that the compression of all the time from, you know, even the 4,500 years, but even when you now mix that we reach that zero point, that takes on humanity, it, its whole existence, wherever that exact moment is, to all these ancient timelines are all converging now, ever since then, and building a massive wave of energy that honestly you've already started to feel coming down on you is it's feeling more compressed and more compressed so every day that goes by you have to remember saturn and pluto get closer we are literally only two and a half degrees away in astrology it's a three degree orb we give pretty much everything except mercury sometimes can get a little lit lesser because it is the smallest planet but there's something to say about compression and this is compressing and compressing which means you don't have a lot of options. Like you just like, like, like you just have to like, there's not, that means that every second that goes by, the compression of time is getting more intense and more intense. And the more you wait about something that you don't like deep in your soul that you're going through, and especially because it was Saturn, Pluto and Libra, like that's the, one of the last things. And then Jupiter and Saturn, that was from 2000. You have to remember some of these cycles that were in where time wave zero that Terrence McKenna had predicted happened that are compressing so we have from your life from 2000 to jupiter and saturn and then we have your life from 1982 1983 even if you weren't born then 
and how relationships affected you and Jupiter and Saturn were in Taurus last time, your self-worth. Why do you think Uranus is here? There's something to say about and how he describes it as the spiraling in the, and it's how it's like it's tightening. So the, 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 everything in the universe time-wise is tightening at that 2012 point. And if, you were to, if he were to have done it after 2012 and to look at this energy, I bet you he would have said that the tightening would have been so fucking extreme it would have been like, he called it chaotic then. Which is why if you look at your life since 2012, there's a like a Mandela, a Mandela effect. There is weird fucking shit going on. And there is something to say that this is like going quantum. Quantum computer came out just in two months ago. And it's just getting tighter and tighter. So it's like, you got to look at this. And the fact that Venus is going to be on top and the Mayans based their whole calendar system and Meyer calendar off Venus cycles. And it just blows my mind because this Jupiter Uranus is about quantum leaping your life or quantum not getting shit because you didn't want to make a choice. Or you just didn't want to do the work. Or you didn't want to take authority in your life. And this moon in Leo is trying to fire you up to get, you can, especially during the benefits, there's nothing better than opening a gift and playing with it. It's, it's almost worse to not get a gift and have nothing to play with. Like that's like one of the worst feelings in the world. And so that could be, and I'm not trying to put like shade on anybody, I'm just being real, that you have time. I'm giving you the, the process of the understanding of the time. Because you want to play with things and have fun with it and be engaging with people and partnerships and stuff, especially with a Monday here. So here comes the moon in Leo. Square Mars. Wow, right? Very passionate Mars in Scorpio. Very emotionally charged moon in Leo. So we either feel the edge and the compassion and the love and the, and the connection or we don't. And that's going to be based off a lot of these choices. The other thing that's interesting to me too is Lilith comes back on top of Neptune again. We've been seeing so much Lilith. It's insane on top of Neptune. And it's either where you feel like you're connected to the divine or you don't. Based off these choices we're making because every day the compression gets more as Saturn is faster than Pluto and it's gaining more speed. And on top of that, here's Jupiter at three, and the Jupiter Uranus trine is done. Sorry, Jupiter ain't coming back here again for another 12 years. And more importantly, Uranus, 12 years from now, will be in Gemini. So we will get a Jupiter in Aquarius trine Uranus. Not here. So, what I did to kind of help people understand things that are coming here. And, and what I did is I did the helio chart for the full moon to help you understand about this choice. So here's the full moon, December 11th, 2019. Now helio means that this is the sun at the center of the chart. Okay. And actually I can change the, and this is going to be the last, this is the last chart we're doing here. So okay, black, here we go. All right. Um, where's this thing? Get rid of that. Okay, great. Okay. So, this is the sun at the center, not the earth. Okay? Remember in, in astrology, geo-based charts of the earth at the center. This is technically earth right here. Okay? This is earth. All right? And what's fun is I added traditional deacons and their dignities and or their, their um, just the energies of the deacons and I also put the Ptolemy ones. So, we're sitting in a Venus, Venus aspect with the full moon and 19 anyway. Now they show the moon, but the moon is with the earth, right? So they're going to be always exact. Okay. And the sun is just right here. So, you know, it's like, remember, this is the viewpoint from the sun as the center and the planets that are going around it. So there's no retrogrades. But what's interesting to me is you're probably going to notice, like, why is Mars in Libra and not in Scorpio? And this is not the same way of dealing with the precession of the equinox, like we see from a difference in Vedic or a difference in, um, you know, tropical. No. This has to deal with the actual positions of the planets as they are around the sun. And what's happening is Earth is faster than Mars. So the reason why that we weren't able to see Mars this year is because it was on the other side of the sun because the Earth, especially if you look at the last 
you know, I don't know, let's say since Pisces, right? So, you know, like, well, sorry, we go back to Virgo, especially. And then if you even go back to even the beginning of this summer, like, you know, Mars was, we, we were in a weird, we were not, Mars is two years, we're one year around the sun. So here comes Earth coming closer to Mars. And Mars isn't as fast. So Mars and Mercury are exactly conjunct on the full moon in Helio, which is in Libra. This is about the choice you make about understanding who you are based off the decisions you are, and you have to make some extreme mental choices in your life about relationships. And this is squared exactly by Pluto and Saturn, which is ironic because in Helio, Saturn and Pluto haven't met yet because there's no retrogrades. And it's interesting to me that they're literally about to meet. So if you see this, 2239, 2155, we're two and a half degrees in, on a geo base from our viewpoint from Earth. But if you were at the center of the sun, the sun's already prepared for Saturn Pluto. So this is one of the reasons why I've been telling people not to wait. Like, oh, can I wait till January 12th to make my hard choice in my life, if that's up? Or, you know, like there's people that are already locked and loaded in life. But you know, when it comes to the relationship thing, especially like what we identify as partnerships, especially with who we partner with in our life, these are major choices that we got to make here. And, you know, especially that if you look at Jupiter, right? So Uranus and Jupiter haven't even made their full trine yet. So even though on Earth plane they are, are about to, but there is something to say about a bigger payoff coming at the end of the full moon, because this is the full moon. We are going to see Jupiter Uranus during after the full moon we have venus as well uh, uh, that's actually exalted in pisces so it's not in capricorn on saturn pluto and it's making great aspects to uranus of these choices we make from a geo perspective on the full moon are actually activating the best relationship aspects we could have about moving forward into better energies by the choices we make and with mars and mercury there is something to say about with mars trining neptune which actually in this chart is not at all but what's interesting is Neptune is at 17 degrees and we have Neptune, which is with Ceres. We have Neptune that is also in square to the Earth in the full moon. So we do need to go from the gut here to build something great. But on top of that, to make sure that we are in true emotional alignment with the Earth that we want to live on and the way that we want that to look, especially since the full moon and Earth is in a double Venus world. If we look at where Mars and Mercury are at, they are in right here a mars and mercury energy and that is insane to me that's exactly what the, those two planets are hold on okay that's insane that's insanity that's adding ptolemy and adding traditional deacons okay so see that right there is where you get the mars to mercury it's a mars mercury energy You've got to take action about the relationships that make sense for your reality and your environment. And it'll, be, it'll affect your health mentally and it'll affect your environment dramatically. And they are in square to the Pluto-Saturn energies. And where are Pluto and Saturn are going to meet? Mars, Mercury. I can't make that shit up. You have to take action what makes sense for your reality. We're lucky because this is about what choices you make for your life and who you are to find your reality. If it was in Saturn's zone with Mercury, it'd be, a lot, I think, a lot tougher. But, you know, with Mars, remember, this is, believe it or not, with Ptolemy's deacons, this is the toughest part of Capricorn right here. Because this is where you have to make major life-changing decisions. And with Mercury there, it's hermetic. You have to not be emotionally connected. You have to do what makes sense for you logically. And you have to look at the logic. There's so much Mercury, okay? with Libra, with Capricorn. And what's also interesting is Uranus is in a double Venus. And there's all this great Uranus aspect of having two of the same people. Some people might call that twin flame. Craig and I were talking about some of that. Maybe we'll answer some of your guys' questions tomorrow on the show. And Jupiter is happening in a Venus Saturn at the beginning here. This is also where the eclipse is going to be about major choices long term and where you're at with relationships. And Jupiter's here. Uh, you know, I mean, everything is revolving around your environment 
and who you are and the choices you make in relationships and the benefits you get from those people or not. Period. Point play. And with Chiron at four, squaring Jupiter exactly during the full moon, there is something to say about, yeah, your perception on things might not look right. It might be a hard choice to make, but with Chiron here, with Mars and Jupiter, it's, an, it's actually, if, you know, there's something to say about this huge payoff that comes when you actually take the rocket ship to the humbling of accepting how weird it looks and dealing with it by expanding into tough choices, you know, and, and, and seeing either the benefits or not. This is a very intense time. And this is a time where there's extreme benefits. This is the last full moon. Don't waste it. Don't waste it on waiting now for a waning energy. And, and if you see there in the helio, and you can see in all the charts that we went through today, and we can just see with Jupiter trying Uranus, you, this is a last moment to see who's really going to come into the benefits the right way by, these are the last tools we're going to learn. These are the last aha moments. These are the last unpredictable, you know, prizes to show up. And then it's desolate. So if you're going to be like, I'm going to wait, Saturn and Pluto meet up in Helio before January 10th. Sorry. And January 12th. So the compression of time is, 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 is here. And, and, and I, I know it might seem like there's just no way in my life I can make this change. Da, 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 da. Yes, you can. But you also are, you know, making the choice that, you know, there is kind of no going back. But if it's something that, like, you know you wouldn't want to sit in for 30 plus years, leave. But if it's something that you could see yourself and you see opportunities and you see everything and, and now it could section you off into a great, you know, amazing place in life, that's how you know. So, and just don't be blurred by your own kind of, like, deception of yourself. Like, oh yeah, I could do that for 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, look out. Take meditation for 30 years about it in your head and, and get your head straight. Because this is going to be a wild week. It's going to be a wild kind of energy and it's going to have a lot of unpredictability. And it's going to have a lot of benefits. But it also, for those that really don't want to show up, don't have the authority to show up or don't want to put any work in or just like will let this deflating energy at the beginning totally stop them from doing anything, it could be feeling like you've missed out on the prizes that are being handed out. I appreciate you all so much. If you want to watch this video, of course, make sure you're a subscriber fully uh, as far as without audio for the chart portion. Go to highvibe.tv, become a subscriber today. I want to thank all the subscribers here on High Vibe for being part of this and, and, and we have so much going on. Remember, watch tomorrow, full disclosure, 1.30 p.m. Pacific on highvibe.tv by subscribing and you can email your questions HV, full disclosure at gmail.com. Craig and I are looking forward to it. Uh, Jupiter and Capricorn videos are out on the paid video section. Don't miss those. And of course, if you want to be part of that full moon event, make sure that you're RSVP at the Facebook for the High Vibe group or you can go to the Leo King Facebook and find it there or I think the link is on my Twitter at the Leo Kingdom and you can find the link as there too. Go down and scroll down. Thank you all so much. Thank you for so much for being a part of Deep Astrology and we will see you on the next video.